me, I feel like I'm the last person on the planet to see this movie. Oh, that's my reflection. Yep, I need new background. Yo, you're watching the Screaming Fish here, people. And once again, I'm here for you guys with yet another movie review. And also, before I really tell you what I'm reviewing, though you probably already know that because of the title, why am I? Why is that? Why is there a different background? Well, first off, I thought it was time for well, you know, a better background than um, a mirrored door that you could see. In the, see myself in the background recording the video, so thought thought this would be a better background because you know Marvel wallpaper. Even though what we're talking about today has nothing to do with Marvel, so yeah, as you can tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about Beauty and the Beast, the remake of a classic animated movie that I really do like. So uh, yeah, it's time to ask that glaring question: Is Beauty and the Beast any good? Well, if you want to continue. Then be our guest. Let's see if this movie is actually any good. Before I actually begin this review, I would just like to point out that I went into this movie with very low expectations and for a couple of reasons. For starters, the original Beauty and the Beast movie that was released on September 29th, 1991 is a timeless classic and is considered by many, including myself, to be a flawless and truly iconic masterpiece of animation. It was one of the many films that proved that Disney are gods in the world of animation and 1991's Beauty and the Beast is a very tough movie to beat on the whole. To put it short, I was not expecting the remake to even come close to living up to the original, and that's actually another reason my expectations were very low. Remakes as a whole, with the exception of movies like John Carpenter's The Thing and 2016's The Jungle Book, very rarely live up to the original. Movies like 2016's The Magnificent Seven or Robocop 2014 are perfect examples of perfectly fine movie remakes that while still not living up to their predecessors, still had a decent amount of enjoyment, in particular The Magnificent Seven. However, there are also movie remakes that are just genuinely terrible. I was, however, excited by the fact that this movie starred Emma Watson as Belle, Dan Stevens as The Beast, and of course Luke Evans as Gaston. So I was excited about the cast of this movie, but enough rambling on, it's time to answer that glaring question in everyone's mind. Is Beauty and the Beast any good? Yes, really good. I'm actually thrilled to say that I really enjoyed this movie. Its script honors the classic source material almost perfectly, while also managing to be as enjoyable and as charming as possible, with fantastic performances from each and every one of the cast, who performs superbly choreographed and fun musical numbers with just genuinely great singing. All of that combined brings the story of Beauty and the Beast back to the big screen for a new generation with breathtaking visuals and a brilliant central performance from Emma Watson. So now that I'm done telling you how much I actually enjoyed this movie, how about we actually get on with the actual review, shall we? So obviously I love the cast. Emma Watson as Belle was just as good as I was hoping she would be. I love the way she portrayed Belle in this movie, and I'll be honest, it's one of the best live action portrayals of a Disney character I've ever seen. Belle as a character is just really likeable and is just a genuinely fun presence on screen. She's a beautiful singer and the way the movie explores how she feels separated and different to everyone else in her town is explored really well here. I love how the film explores that and it basically in effect delivers a very important life lesson to viewers saying to them, be yourself and don't worry about what other people think of you, which I think is a very inspiring message. The film also delves into her backstory a lot more than I thought it would which was really cool to see and, as you can imagine, very intriguing in the way they handled that aspect of the character. The plot point about Belle feeling different to everyone else is explored even further through the relationship between Belle and the Beast. I found the relationship that blossoms between these two characters as the film progresses so charming. They go from two people who constantly insult each other to a couple with a romance that they share that always just seems so natural and real and the romance that is developed so well over the course of the movie is just so well realized in this film and speaking of the beast oh my god i love this guy the performance from dan stevens is fantastic in this movie he was so charming and likable as soon as this character makes his first appearance on screen you're immediately hooked the beast is a really dark and fascinating character he begins as this cold, angry, and unlikable person, and it's through the relationship he forms with Belle that he begins to lighten up a little, and as that selfishness is washed away over the course of the film, 
you, you begin to see a different person and I really love the way this film handled that element. While that is the driving force of this movie, it's also actually the most intriguing part of the entire movie. The Beast himself looks fantastic. The visual effects for the Beast in this movie are pretty much flawless and the same can be said for every other visual effect in the movie. Beauty and the Beast is one of the best looking Disney movies, period. The visual effects are breathtaking. The CGI in this movie is virtually flawless. There was not a single moment during my time watching this movie where I thought there was a visual effect that looked bad or mediocre or obvious. Everything from the set to the visual effects was built and rendered perfectly. This movie is also shot superbly well. There are a lot of shots in this movie that took my breath away, in particular most of the shots of the castle and also this movie is just edited superbly. The musical numbers in this movie are fantastic. They are all fantastic reimaginings of classic songs from the original as well as some new additions that are more than above average. The choreography for all the sequences was once again fantastic, in particular the scene where Beast and Belle are dancing in the ballroom. That scene from the original is recreated perfectly in this movie and I would even say that it's just as good if not better than the original scene from the animated classic. Actually, there are a lot of scenes from the original that are recreated flawlessly in this movie thanks to excellent writing and choreography. One of the best parts of this movie for me was Luke Evans as Gaston and Josh Gad as LaFou. These two characters are the dictionary definition of gold, in particular Gaston. The interactions between the two had me laughing all the way through. Gaston, who is primarily the main villain of the movie, gave such a charming performance but the movie really does let you know how desperate this character is to fall in love with Belle and while that does sound like a simple motivation for a villain, it translates so well on screen in both a charming and villainous way. I love the other side characters in this movie like Cogsworth and Lumiere who were all terrific to watch on screen and phenomenally voice acted by Ian McKellen and Ewan McGregor. They all did terrific work with their voice work, even if some were in it more than others. But I really have to say, this is a really funny movie. The comedy here is really effective, and while there were a few jokes that didn't quite land for me, that was a very small handful. So in other words, the comedy here is fantastic. So what didn't I like about Beauty and the Beast? Well, while there wasn't really much I didn't like here because this movie is fantastic, there were a couple of things that Beauty and the Beast did that I didn't really like. For starters, the first 10 to 20 minutes of the movie for me were very hammy. Yeah, there were still some really good musical numbers, but the way those first 20 minutes were executed, in my opinion, left much to be desired. To put it short, I started this movie thinking I wasn't going to have a good time because those first 20 minutes made me feel like I was watching your typical average Disney princess movie with all the typical Disney princess tropes that we've come to expect over the years, and it was very awkwardly paced in my opinion. Things just went a little too quickly for my liking. However, thankfully, as soon as we hit the 20 minute mark, I was hooked. There's also a glaring flaw with this movie that I will admit is probably its biggest fault and in some cases unavoidable, which is why I think some of you are going to disagree with me here. But please, just hear me out for just a second. If you're a really big fan of the original and you've watched it multiple times and you're really excited for this one, then I must fair warn you here and now that you're basically walking into almost the exact same movie just in live action. Don't get me wrong, there are new story elements and new songs put in place here, but for the majority of the movie, it's very much beat for beat the same as the original, and yes, believe me, I know full on well that this is a remake of a 1991 classic. I'm just trying to say here that for people who have seen the original, this may feel a little bit predictable. Though, if I'm really honest here, that didn't really have much effect on my experience watching this movie because everything else is done so darn well that I could hardly care. Beauty and the Beast is a brilliant remake that certainly lives up to its source material, but it's also just a brilliant Disney movie in general. I had a real good time watching Beauty and the Beast and I seriously recommend you go and check this out for yourself. Believe me, you'll have a great time watching this. I wouldn't say that it's the absolute best movie I've seen this year so far. I mean, nothing so far has, beat, has beaten Logan. But this movie is definitely up there and I would definitely say that this is an excellent movie for all ages. So guys, those are my thoughts on Beauty and the Beast. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Did you think it was okay? Did you think it was amazing or did you not like it? Please leave your thoughts down in the comments below and yeah, I do recommend you go see Beauty and the Beast. You're gonna have a really fun time. So 
In other words, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And I will indeed, guys, see you in the next video, and I will leave you with this.